to nine protests on the grounds of the Antipo Secondary School. But with the representation we have today, we're sending that message to the government. Why one journalist says St. Lucia and other Caribbean countries may want to follow Dominica's lead. And fire destroys a house at Ansari. We have the details of these stories and more coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelies and Amy Jason. Good night. It is Thursday, the 7th of November, 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. We're on Flow Channel 117, also being simulcast on KISS FM Radio. You can also watch on our website, www.caribbeanhottv.com or on our free Caribbean Hot FM mobile app. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. Parents of students who attend the Antropo Secondary School took a stand on Thursday and sent a message to the Ministry of Education by taking protest action outside the school. With placards in hand, the parents are demanding that the long-standing mold issue is addressed for once and for all, or they say they will not be sending their children back to the school. Rochelle Gonzalez was there and filed this report. But with the representation we have today, we're sending that message to the government. As the mole saga continues right here at the Entrepo Secondary School, it would appear that the situation is reaching fever pitch as parents slowly begin to trickle into protest and to express their frustrations over the ongoing matter. With placards in hand, the parents are taking a stand and demanding that the Ministry of Education take immediate action for the health of their children. We came to the conclusion as parents as of last night, that enough is enough. A lot of the things that are happening in the schools need not to happen. And we have come to the decision to withdraw our children from the school until the problem is not just remedied, but it is done to our satisfaction and to the satisfaction of the teachers. Parent Martin Augustine says he hopes that the Ministry of Education not only takes note, but feels ashamed of what has transpired here today. If our children, if it has gotten to that point in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. where our children now have to be going on protests, teachers have to be going on protests, uh, parents are on protests, what a shame it has become. Augustine went on to question the legitimacy of the findings of the mold report and then demanded a second opinion. If a company did the remedial work, why is there no evidence? Why now there is no evidence of mold at the school? Initially, I said, when they said there was mold. So right now, what are we to believe? Who are we to believe? We need the evidence, we need them to talk to us. As to when the students will be returning to classes, that is left to be seen. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. Thank you very much, Rochelle. Now, in times of unrest, while many try to hide political motives, this was not the case for one parent of an Antropo Secondary School student. Martin Augustine was not shy to blame the brewing tension surrounding the mold infestation at the school on the government of St. Usha. Standing among a group of placard-bearing parents outside the school gates, Augustine had this to say. A lot of people say it is political. But you know what? It is political. Because you know what? Who make the policies? Who set the policies and guidelines? It is the politicians. Every single decision we make in our life, we decided to come here today. We had to pay the bus. Who decides the price of gas? It's the government. It's the politicians. So every single aspect of our life involves politics. He says the action taken by the parents and teachers over the current situation is for the future of children. What we are doing now, some of us close our businesses. We are here. Some people are late for work. We are here. We are not just doing it for our children. We are doing it for St. Lucia. We are doing it for St. Lucia and it is time we stand and represent our children and represent them well. Because you know what? 
these children are the future of this country. And the future doesn't start one year, two years from now. The future starts now. If we do not give them the fundamental structure they need in terms of education, it's like we're just training them to go and clean horse manure. Augustine touched upon the hot topic of the horse racing track attached to the Desert Star Holding Project. He urged the government to place as much attention on the nation's children as they have placed on the DSH horses. What a shame it has become. What a shame it has become when we can boast that we have horses, okay? We have horses and we'll be having a horse race. I have nothing against it. I have nothing against it. But what I am saying, it is said that horse race is the game of kings. I just want to say to the government, what if you're treating the kings that way? What about the princes and princesses of St. Lucia? If you would only give the princes and princesses of St. Lucia half the attention you're giving to the horses, we would be a better nation. Augustine thanked the parents for turning up to the protests as well as teachers who supported. He said the fate of the affected children now lies in the hands of the government. We will have more on this matter, but first, a fire in Ancillary on Thursday gutted a house in the area. Fire officials from Castries could be heard with blaring sirens as they rushed to the scene. Reports are that no one was hurt in the fire, but a family has been affected. Details are still emerging. We will have an update in a subsequent newscast. Now, the president of the St. Lucia Teachers Union, Julian Monrose, is standing in complete solidarity with the parents of Anthropo Secondary School students, as well as the teachers of the school who have chosen to stay away from their classes in protest of the ongoing mold situation. Monrose says he hopes the Ministry of Education takes heed. The teachers of the Anthropo Secondary School can rest assured that the St. Lucia Teachers Union has their back, and this was confirmed by the organization's president himself, Julian Monrose. Monrose came to the ESS on Thursday morning to assess the situation at the school where parents of students were taking protest action outside the school gates. Monrose said this matter has been going on for too long. The St. Lucia Teachers Union has been for a number of years highlighting the issues of the Entropo Secondary School. What is happening there now is not new. Um, we have had a situation with asbestos over the years, with mold, etc. And for several years, the Ministry has promised that it will give the Entropo, make the Entropo Secondary School a priority and give the school a new wing. As you know, some, of the, some parts of that building was since built in 1972. The SLTU president said along with their verbal support, the union is also putting their feet down for the sake of the teachers affected by the ongoing matter. The teachers union has taken a position that we will no longer allow our members to enter the premises until we are certain and we have the confidence that the necessary work has been done. We are happy that now the parents have come on board because they understand that is not only the teachers being affected, the children are also being affected. The teachers' working conditions are the children's learning conditions. Monroe said he hopes that the decision taken by teachers, and especially parents to keep their children away from the school, will serve as an eye-opener to the Ministry of Education. He said the ministry needs to take a deeper look at their school budget and how they spend that money. I don't know how tight their hands are, but when you are a Ministry of Education and you're about the place boasting that in two years you've been given $20 million to spend on 100 schools, that's $200,000 per school. We shouldn't have that kind of problem in any school. So probably the Ministry needs to look at how it spends the money if in fact it had $20 million. 
Other schools affected by similar issues, namely Bocash Secondary, Sir Ira Simmons Secondary School, and the T. Roche Early Childhood Development Center, have all been closed, with Bocage and Sir Ira due to reopen on Monday the 11th of November, whilst T. Roche is closed indefinitely. Monroe said this is the case because of the intervention of the SLTU, who will not sit by idly whilst teachers suffer. Reporting for Heart 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. Dominica's Labour Party is eyeing a fourth consecutive term in office, which if secured will mean 20 years in power for Roosevelt Skerritt. Journalist Earl Buski says for continuity's sake, this length of stay in office is beneficial. He touts the level of developments in Dominica, particularly after the ravages of Muria and Irma, and says Skerritt, from all indications, is poised for a record win. Journalist Earl Bousquet is weighing in on developments in Sister Isle Dominica after the announcement that elections will be held come the 6th of December 2019. Many political pundits believe that the rebuilding effort in the wake of Hurricane Maria and the securing of aid by the government will bolster the Skerritt-led administration and may be the defining factor in the upcoming election. Bouske says if Skerritt's Dominican Labour Party is able to clench this fourth consecutive win, it will augur well for the rebuilding effort after the ravages of Hurricane Maria and also Irma. The disappointment and despair that was caused by the hurricane and the destruction it caused, short of the lives that cannot come back, what it has allowed is for Dominica to be rebuilt and to be rebuilt in a way that none of the other Caribbean countries that have undertaken that re national rebuilding effort to be able to do it in a way that is going to make it climate resilient, that is going to prepare it for hurricanes. Buske says Dominica's government, headed by Roosevelt Skerritt, has clearly been able to receive international backing for its developmental thrust. For continuity's sake, Bousquet says consecutive terms in office can redound to the benefit of countries. He says other countries may want to take a closer look at Dominica's political developments. In the last three elections in St. Lucia, we had a regime change after each election, and each government changed approaches to each of the major set of things inherited. In the case of Dominic, that is one of the that is one of the penalties we face when we have changes of government. Often, regime change can have negative effects on continuity of good programs. But if you have a party in government for 20 years, it has been able to, and it has been able to implement its manifesto four times. Then that 20 years will give it four five-year periods to deliver on all of his promises. Skerritt, while remaining largely popular, has faced his fair share of controversy and harsh criticism from the opposition led by Lennox Linton. He continues to be dogged by allegations of corruption regarding the Citizenship by Investment Program. These allegations have been vociferously denied by the Dominican Labour Party. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Still to come, the poppy appeal needs your help to be in full bloom. Join the Musicians' Feast festivities and hear about the first country to make learning about climate change compulsory for school students. That and more when we return.